This is an author about whom more has been written than probably any other person in history except for Jesus Christ. I'm here today to talk to you about evidence, controversy, and logic. We've been handed arguably the greatest work of art in, in human history, but it's also a map. It, it points us to and it guides us through the life of the author. But we've been looking at the wrong guy. We've been in the wrong city. Once you reorient yourself and once you relocate yourself to the city that the map is actually about, not only is the map still a beautiful map and a beautiful work of art unto itself, but that map then guides you. Devere, we know, was, was in Palermo. Where we're at today is that we have discovered the city that the map was about. We're finding these amazing autobiographical touchstones where the author is writing about his own experience, like Charles Dickens writing Great Expectations. And who is that person that the map is about? His name was Edward Devere. He wrote about kings and queens in the inside of the palace. What was his process? How did he get so confident in his imagination? The De Veres were some of the most influential people because of their huge land holdings, but also because of the fact that they were the hereditary uh, Lord Great Chamberlains of England, which gave them direct access uh, to the monarch. De Vere was certainly entitled to an education that would enable him to handle all the political knowledge that goes with being a member of parliament. Sometime in his early childhood, De Vere was raised in the household of one of the great Elizabethan scholars, Sir Thomas Smith, certainly considered one of the greatest at Cambridge University. From age 12, De Vere was then moved to this household of Sir William Cecil. Cecil ran what many scholars reckon as the best Elizabethan school for boys in all of England. It brought some of the leading lights of, of English scholarship into this one place to teach what was hoped would be England's great leaders of, of the next generation. Italy is a favorite setting of Shakespeare's. How did Shakespeare know all of these detailed facts about courtly life in not only the English court but in these foreign courts as well? By the time he's 25, he's chomping to go to Italy. Why? Because only there can he meet the sculptors and the painters and the diplomats. Venice in the 16th century was something like New York City in the 20th and 21st. It was the cultural, economic center of Europe, and De Vere wanted to be there. This is not just a guy who took a tourist trip. When he came back, he brought the Renaissance back to England. The real life story of Edward de Vere, whether he would be Shakespeare or not, is a, an incredible saga, an amazing saga of one man. Edward de Vere is portrayed as, as the black sheep of the family too. And that uh, perhaps makes him even more interesting, I suppose. He wasn't cast in the usual mold of uh, the landowning, of gentry or the, um, you know, the elite. Well, there's many, many surprising things about the Earl of Oxford. He challenged the whole of Palermo to a duel, I think is a wonderful th aspect of, of the man who might have written the plays. He was robbed by pirates when he came back uh, and landed, you know, naked on the shores of Britain like Hamlet. He was a very temperamental person. Difficult is putting it kindly. Man, this guy, if you watched the Earl of Oxford walk into a room, Boom. He was a th very theatrical man. I suppose in today's parlance we say he was rather camp. Um, um, he loved dressing up. He, he loved showing off. Edward de Vere was someone that I would have loved to share a beer with, but I'd hate to share a house with. There certainly are records from people who knew him, who uh, loathed him. It's known that he was fond of the tavern and tended to be quick-tempered and quarrelsome. John Lennon, to a lot of people, was not a nice guy. Uh, Pablo Picasso was not a nice guy. Mozart, I don't think, was a nice guy either. It's always been my impression that people in the theater 
are forced for some reason or other to express themselves behind the mask of pretending to be someone else. That that's obviously applies for De Vere. Such a troubled life. These are plays that are coming from a deep personal place. And the reason that they are so universal and the reason that they speak to all of us is in part because the author was so intimate and so personal with his own life story. Essentially every play, almost every scene of every Shakespeare play contains elements, characters, situations from De Vere's life.